Instructions for My Soul to Cut Off Pride and Prepare for Death by St. Paisios Velichkovsky. An excerpt from Little Russian Philokolia, Volume 4, St. Paisios Velichkovsky. A Brief Exposition of Thoughts Which Dispose to Repentance. Remember, O oh my soul, the terrible and frightful wonder that your Creator for your sake became man and deign to suffer for the sake of your salvation. His angels tremble, the cherubim are terrified, the seraphim are in fear, and all the heavenly powers ceaselessly give praise. And you, unfortunate soul, remain in laziness. At least for this time forth, arise and do not put off, my beloved soul, holy repentance, contrition of heart and penance for your sins. Putting them off year after year, month after month, day after day. You will not at all desire with your whole heart to repent, and you will not find one to have compassion on you. Oh, with what torture you will then begin to repent, but without success. Having the opportunity today to do some good deed, do not put off until tomorrow, my beloved soul, holy repentance, because you do not know what today will bring forth or what misfortune might happen to you this night. For you do not know what the day or night will bring, whether a long life stands before you or not, or if you will suddenly and unexpectedly receive a miserable and speedy death. Now, my beloved soul, is the time of patience. Now is the time to endure sorrow. Now is the time to keep the commandments and fulfill the virtues. Now is the time of sweet lamentation and tearful mourning. If you truly wish to be saved, my soul, be in love with sorrow and groaning, as previously you loved repose. Live as if you were daily dying. Soon your life will pass by like the shadow of clouds before the sun, and you will be forgotten. The days of our life, as it were, are shed forth into the air, and so do not hesitate even before the most difficult sorrow. With regard to men, let us not speak of senseless sorrow, but even in reasonable sorrow. Do not give yourself over to grief. Do not be disturbed. Do not run away. But consider yourself as dust before the feet of others. Without this you cannot be saved or escape eternal torment. For our life ends soon and passes away as a single day. If a man will not crush himself piously through virtues, or will not sacrifice his own life for the fulfilling of God's commandments and the traditions of the fathers, he cannot be saved. And thus, my beloved soul, remember all the saints, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, hierarchs, holy monks and righteous ones, fools for Christ and all who from the ages have pleased God. Where have you found saints who did not subdue the flesh to the spirit, or who did not suffer in difficult misfortunes, and cruel sorrows. But daily they received a multitude of misfortunes, likewise suffered hunger and thirst, kept vigil and prayed day and night, had humility and contrition of heart, a childlike lack of malice, every mercy, an aid in every sorrow and need, various gifts and almsgiving, as much as possible. In a word, they had all the virtues, together with an unhypocritical love, what they themselves did not wish and hated, they did not do to others. And they did it with obedience, like bought slaves, working not as for a man, but as for God, and with simplicity, but not appearing wise, as being insignificant, but only paying heed to their own salvation. O oh man, death stands before you. If you will labor, you will be revered with eternal life in the future age. Virtue is acquired by every kind of forcing oneself. Therefore, if you wish to conquer the passions, cut off the love of pleasure. But if you are pursuing food, you will spend a life in passions. The soul will not be humbled if the flesh is not deprived of bread. It is not possible to deliver the soul from perdition while protecting the body from unpleasantness. Therefore, let us return to what is primary. If you wish to be saved, O oh my soul, to go first on the most sorrowful path which has been indicated here, to enter into the heavenly kingdom and receive eternal life, then refine your flesh, 
taste voluntary bitterness and endure difficult sorrows, as all the saints tasted and endured. And when a man is preparing himself and gives himself the command to endure for the sake of God all sorrows which come upon him, then light and painless seem for him all sorrows, unpleasantness, and attacks of devils and men. He does not fear death, and nothing can separate such a one from the love of Christ. Have you heard, my beloved soul, how the Holy Fathers spent their lives? O oh, my soul, imitate them at least a little. Did they not have tears? O oh, woe, my soul! Were they not sorrowful, thin, and worn out in body? O oh, woe, my soul! Did they not have bodily illnesses, great wounds, and lamentation of soul with tears? O oh, woe, my soul! Were they not clothed in the same infirm body that we have? O oh, woe, my soul! Did they not have the desire for splendid, sweet and light repose in this world in every bodily repose? Yes, they desired these things, and their bodies in truth were afflicted, but they exchanged their desires for patience and their grief for future joy. They cut off everything once and for all. They considered themselves as dead men and tormented themselves mercilessly in spiritual labors. Do you see, my soul, how the Holy Fathers labored having no repose and suffering every kind of evil? They subjected the flesh to the Spirit and fulfilled all the other commandments of God and were saved. But you, O pitiful soul, do not at all wish to force yourself, and you grow faint from small labors, growing despondent, and do not at all remember the hour of death and weep over your sins. But you have become accustomed, my wretched soul, to eat to the fill, to drink to the fill, and to be slothful. Do you not know that you are called voluntarily to torment? And yet you endure nothing. How then do you wish to be saved? At least from this time forth, then, arise, my beloved soul, and do what I shall tell you. If you cannot labor as the Holy Fathers did, then at least begin according to your strength. Serve everyone with humility and simplicity of heart. Acknowledging your infirmity and belittling yourself, say, Woe to thee, my wretched soul! Woe to thee, vile one! Woe to thee, O all-defiled one, slothful, careless, sleepy, cruel! Woe to thee, who has perished! And so, little by little, it will come to tender feeling, will shed tears, will come to itself and repent. The Battle Against Despondency slothfulness, and weakness. When this happens, occupy mind with the thought of death. Come mentally to the grave. Behold there one who has been dead four days, how he grows dark, bloated, and gives off an intolerable foul odor, is eaten by worms, having lost his fair appearance and beauty. Then look in another place. Here there lie in the grave the bones of young and old, the beautiful and the ugly, and consider who was fair or ugly, who was a faster, a continent man, an ascetic, or a careless man, and did it bring benefit to rich men that they had repose and enjoyment in this world? Remember then the endless torments of which the holy books speak, the fire of Gehenna, the outer darkness, the gnashing of teeth, the infernal Tartarus, the unsleeping worm and depict to yourself how sinners cry out there with bitter tears, and no one delivers them. They lament and weep over themselves, and no one has pity on them. They sigh from the depths of the heart, and no one has compassion on them. They implore for help, complain about their grief, and no one heeds them. Think how creatures, each in its own time, unfailingly serve the Lord their Creator. Reflect concerning the most glorious miracles of God which have been performed upon his slaves from the beginning of the world, and especially of how the Lord, having humbled himself and suffered for the sake of our salvation, has benefacted and sanctified the human race. And for all this give thanksgiving to God, the lover of mankind. Remember the future endless life and the kingdom of heaven, the repose and unutterable joy. Stand firm. 
do not leave off the prayer of Jesus. If you will recall and reflect on all this, then despondency, slothfulness, and weakness will disappear, and your soul will come to life as from the dead by the grace of Christ. An instruction moving to contrition, which cuts off all self-exaltation and human pride and converts the soul to fountains of tears. If you seek such contrition, it is most sweet and soul-profiting to pay heed to the following instruction concerning the departure of your soul. Now, O man, you are taking enjoyment of beauty, attractiveness, and glory, and spend your life in vain adornment, hoping thus to spend hour after hour, day after day, month after month, year after year. O man, your life is all the time coming to an end. Life passes by. Time little by little goes past. The frightful throne of the Lord is being prepared. The righteous judge is drawing near. O man, the judgment is at the doors. Expect a frightful answer. The fiery river, boiling, is resounding with a crackling and with powerful sparks. Frightful torments are raging, awaiting the torture of sinners. O man, labor, strive, struggle. Before your death, a herald will not come. The reward of the saints is at hand. Crowns are being prepared for the righteous. For those who labor and endure sorrows, the kingdom of heaven is opened. Endless repose is at hand, and unutterable joy is being prepared. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered the heart of man, that which God has prepared for those who love him. O man, have you heard of torments? Why do you not tremble and become frightened? O oh man, have you heard of unending joy? Why do you not struggle? Why do you waste the time of your life in tumult and vanity? Later you will not find another time, even though you might search with tears. O oh man, even if you live for a hundred, for a thousand years in this world with every food and enjoyment, fattening yourself like a calf and making yourself look good like a fox. When the frightful end, death, will come, then our life will seem as a single day, and all satiety and adornment will disappear without a trace, like the flower of the grass which quickly falls away. O oh man, your life from birth to maturity and old age is like a single day, and after this is the speedy, unexpected end of your life. O oh man, bring to mind, where are your grandfathers and great-grandfathers? Where are your father and mother and brothers? Where are your relatives and close friends? Did they not all depart this life? Did they not also wish to live a little longer in this world, to enjoy themselves, adorn themselves, and make merry in their prosperity? But behold, against their own desire they were taken away. Remember that you are earth, you are nourished by the earth, and you will go again into the earth. The flesh will disintegrate and rot, will be eaten by worms, and the bones will crumble like dust. Bring to mind the days of eternity and the years of past generations. How many kings and princes there were who lived in enjoyment and adornment. And what did this help them in their departure from this temporal life? Where then were their enjoyment and adornment? For now they are earth and ashes. How many strong, rich, valiant young men, blossoming with youth and beauty, there have been in this world, and how did their mighty strength, their pleasant youth blossoming with beauty, help them? It is as if all this had never been. Thousands of thousands and ten thousands of ten thousands, or as the sand of the sea, have been the men of every kind, and all of them departed this life. Some of them could not give any kind of answer at the hour of death but unexpectedly, standing or sitting, were taken away by death. Some gave up the ghost while eating and drinking. Others died suddenly while traveling. Some, while lying in bed and thinking to refresh their body by a small, brief sleep, in such a condition have fallen asleep in an eternal sleep. Some miserably endured agonies at their last hour, beholding fearful, threatening spectacles, the mere depiction of which can terrify us not a little. And there have been other various and sudden deaths. Oh, oh, woe, woe! How the soul weeps before death, 
raises its eyes to the angels, stretches out its arms to men, pitifully implores, but receives no help. In truth, the vanity of man. Oh, oh, woe, woe! Frightful and terrible it is to all when the soul is forcibly separated from the body. The soul departs with weeping, and the body is given over to the earth. Then all hope in the vanity, charm, glory, and enjoyment of earthly things is converted to nothing. Oh, oh, woe, woe! A great weeping and lamentation, a great sighing and affliction is the separation of the soul. Oh, woe, woe! Short is this path on which we go with the body. This life is smoke, steam, dirt, ashes, dust, stench. As smoke disperses in the air, as the flower of the grass quickly falls away and fades, as a horse quickly runs away, as water flows quickly by, and as the fog ascends from the surface of the earth, and as the dew of the morning vanishes, or as a bird flies by, thus does the life of this age pass away. As the wind passes by, so does time go and pass by, and the days of our life come to an end. It is better to endure more and to love fierce and cruel sorrows in this world than to have a thousand years of joy and repose in this age as against a single day of the age to come. For the path of earthly life is not long. It appears for a short time and soon passes by. In truth, Vanity and corruption is everything sweet, beautiful, and glorious in this world. For these things, just like a shadow, being altered, pass everything by, and they are in this world like a dream. Now someone is, and a little later he departs. Today he is with us, and in the morning is given over to the tomb. Oh, oh, woe, woe! Truly in vain does everyone born of earth trouble himself. We all change, we all will die. Kings and princes, judges and powerful ones, rich and poor, and every human being. Today he rejoices with us, takes enjoyment and adorns himself, and in the morning we weep over him and lament and mourn. O man, come to the tomb. Behold there a dead man lying. He is not glorious, not good of appearance, not beautiful. How he is swollen up and gives off a foul odor. The flesh rots and is corrupted and is devoured by worms. The bones are laid bare and the whole body crumbles to dust. Oh, oh, woe, woe! Oh, sinful soul, what a frightful vision! Woe, woe! Made rich with the senses of soul and body, created most wisely, there is in you now neither splendor, nor good appearance, nor beauty. Whither has your bodily beauty and splendid youth disappeared? Where is the smiling face? Where the splendid and bright eyes? Where is the eloquent tongue of Aristotle? Where is the breath? Where is the sweet, soft, and gentle voice? Where is the eloquence of wisdom, the dignified walk, the dreams and desires, and the vain cares? All this has fallen away and is eaten by worms. Behold how some of them come out of the mouth and nostrils others from the eyes and ears, others from the posterior opening, and how the whole is filled with ugliness and foulness. Oh, oh, woe, woe! Beholding the dust lying in the tomb, let us say to ourselves, Who is the king and the noble? Who the poor man? Who is the master and who is the slave? Who is the glorious? Who the inglorious? Who is the wise? Who the fool? Where are the beauty and enjoyment of this world? Where are the power and wisdom of this age? Where are the dreams and the short-lived charms? Where is the corruptible and vain wealth? Where are the silver and gold ornaments? Where is the multitude of slaves standing by? Where are all the cares of this vain age? There is nothing left of all this. The man is deprived of all this. Oh, oh, woe, woe. Truly, in vain does everyone born of earth trouble himself. I behold you in the tomb and am terrified at your appearance. I behold you and tremble and shed tears with my whole heart. Oh, oh, cruel and merciless death, who can flee you? You devour the human race like unripe wheat. 
And thus, brethren, having come to see the shortness of our life and the vanity of this age, let us take care for the hour of death, leaving off the tumult of this world and the useless worldly cares. For neither wealth nor glory nor enjoyment will remain with us after death, and nothing of this will descend with us into the tomb. Only good deeds will go there and defend us and remain with us. We were born naked, and naked we depart again. And so, hearing this, we should not only sit in silence in our cells, restrain our tongue, take care for our souls, and weep in prayer over our sins, but we should even hide ourselves under the earth, mourn there over our sins while we are still alive, and live while dying for the sake of God in struggle. Knowing our speedy departure, let us before death wear out our corruptible body, because after death also it must remain corruptible until the Lord God resurrects us from the dead on the last day and grants to us immortal life and the endless kingdom forever. Amen.